Hi, this is Guy Harris. Welcome to Talk Like a Leader. This week's episode is titled Overcoming the Pull of the Past, and there's a subtitle to it, Dealing with Leadership Undertow. The idea for this episode is directed at what happens when you move into a leadership position during that transition phase where you haven't really had the opportunity to establish your own track record yet. And the thing to recognize is that when you move into a leadership position, you haven't had the chance to build your own track record yet. You inherit a lot of what came before you. In fact, you inherit the track record of the leader or leaders who came before you in the same position. Now, to to paraphrase Mark Twain, he said, not only will a cat who's jumped on a hot stove not jump on a hot stove again, he won't jump on a cold one either. Now, the point in that is that a cat, once it has a memory of what a stove does, avoids a stove at all cost, even if the stove can't hurt it. Well, unfortunately, people are a lot like cats in that regard. Once burned, twice shy. If they've had a bad experience with a leader, even if it's not you, they might associate that bad experience with you. They might associate it with the seat you sit in, not the person who sits in the seat. This isn't always true. It's often true, though. It's often true that what has come before affects how people judge what will happen in the future. And it really makes sense if you think about it, because the only thing that they have to judge or to anticipate how things will happen in the future is what they've experienced in the past. And it's actually sort of reasonable to assume that what happened in the past will happen again in the future. Now, even though you're not the same person, even though you probably make decisions on a different basis from past leaders in your position, you're going to inherit a lot of that, both the good and the bad. Now, inheriting the bad is things like change management efforts that have gone badly. It means that people will assume that change management goes badly. Promises that were broken in the past means that people might assume that promises will be broken in the future. Now, I had experience once in one of my leadership roles where we, as a senior leadership team for this organization, developed a, uh, a bonus plan for the members of the organization, for the, all the team members. We came up with some metrics. We were pretty excited about it. We were, as the, the three leaders, or excuse me, four leaders who were leaders of this organization, we were pretty excited about the opportunity to share the growth of the organization with the members of the team. Well, the thing we didn't know was that many years before, a prior leader had come up with a bonus plan and then had changed the rules of the game in the middle of the year and wound up not paying the bonus because they didn't want to. Basically, they broke the promise to the employees. So here we come along, this new management team. We don't know anything about this past experience. We come up with a bonus plan, and what we hear from people is, this organization doesn't pay bonuses. Yeah, yeah, you say you're going to do it. It's not going to happen. They had jumped on a hot stove, and they weren't going to jump on a cold one either. Well, this is a thing that happens when we move into leadership. We inherit the past. And the situation that I faced was very frustrating to know that I, I, as a member of the leadership team, we, as the leadership team, was in good faith attempting to do something beneficial for employees And they just wouldn't accept that it was going to happen because it hadn't happened in the past. And unfortunately, kind of in a a weird sidebar, even when we did deliver that year, the second year, they were still kind of skeptical. It's kind of funny because they had been burned. They were hesitant to trust. Well, that's the thing that comes with leadership. You just inherit it. And that's the reason I call it leadership undertow, because the past has a pull on people's experience. They will anticipate things. They will expect things because of what they've seen in the past. And until you've had a chance to build your own track record, maybe actually having to go against their experience two, three, four, five times maybe, that bad past experience will probably still flavor their anticipation. I say this not to be negative, but to acknowledge the reality of the situation. And that's why I call it leadership undertow. You know, I happen to be recording this particular podcast episode from a hotel room. So I don't know if you can hear different background noises or if the sound quality is different from what is typically true when I record in my office. As I came in today, I turned on the TV to see what was going on. I'm trying to get ready for the next day. And so I just got the kind of TV going for sort of background noise. And the movie Perfect Storm is on. And it occurred to me that. Storms cause undertow, and undertow is a thing that affects people on a beach. And if you've been around the ocean, 
and you've been around the undertow situations, you know that the way to deal with undertow is not to fight it because you actually can't fight it. It will win. It will exhaust you. It will suck you under. The way to deal with undertow is to turn into the undertow, swim out past the point where the undertow is strong, then swim along the beach, parallel to the beach, until you can get to a place where you can swim into the beach again. So you fight undertow not by fighting it, but really by starting your approach into it and then going along parallel to it until you find a point of approach. And I think that's a similar thing, kind of an an analogy to how you would deal with the pull of the past in your organization. You can't ignore it because it's there. And frankly, efforts to fight it put you in direct opposition with people's memory. A better approach is to swim into it, learn to understand it, learn to understand and honor the experience people have had, swim into the undertow, then swim alongside, parallel to the beach, basically doing the things you know you need to do to eventually overcome the negative pull. And once you've started to build a bit of a track record, now you can swim into the beach and get yourself on dry land. So you've got to embrace the pull of the past people have because it's real. It's their experience. And until They know that you've understood it till you've proven that you won't live down to the negative expectations they have. They're going to have those negative expectations. So embrace it. It's just people's history. The way we overcome it is just to continue doing the right things, to invest the time to understand, to invest the time to talk with people. One of the things I learned in that experience with the bonus situation is that we didn't, as a leadership team, truly understand the history of the organization. We kind of thought we did. And we didn't really understand until we had attempted to implement something new. Now, the good news is, because there were four of us with different types of experiences, different perspectives, we were able to come together, support each other, learn from each other, uh, engage with team members to understand why they were hesitant to, to believe that we would actually pay out on what we promised. And we were able to get through it. The front end of it was pretty ugly, though. The front end of it was very frustrating because that pull of the past felt like a fight felt like a confrontation to us when really it was just our team members expressing their negative experience. So when the pull of the past creates problems in the present, deal with it like you would deal with undertow in the ocean. Swim into it, embrace it, invest your time understanding your team members' struggles and frustrations. Swim alongside it, you know, acknowledging that the undertow is there, just continuing to move upstream or downstream until you can find a place to swim in, into the shore. And then when you do get that breakthrough, when you've had that track record, when you've had some wins with your team, now you can turn and build a positive, looking forward, moving to the future engagement. If you can do that, if you can realistically and honestly, without complaint, frustration, or lament, understand and address the concerns and frustrations of your team, recognizing that The complaint they bring to you is probably more about their past experience than it is about you directly. If you can avoid feeding the negative by getting frustrated with it, stay positive and optimistic, pointing towards the future, you can talk like a leader. This has been the Talk Like a Leader podcast. You can listen to this show every week wherever you get your podcast. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm Guy Harris, and thanks for listening.